Hi, welcome back to Cake and Crochet. Today I'm going to show you, well, start showing you how to make the first of the maze placemats. So this is the front chart, and this is the back chart. Um, my computer printed it double-sided, so I've got them on the same sheet. You can see that the back part actually doesn't make a maze that you can do, so only it's a one-sided pattern. The front part's a maze, the back part is just a whole bunch of squiggles. So to start, um, I'm using Dishy yarn from We Crochet. These are the colors Conch and Navy. You can use whatever cotton yarn you'd like. With whatever your outside color is going to be. So I've chosen to make the Navy my outside color and the Conch my inside color, the white on the map. So with your outside color, you're going to make a chain 75 stitches long. It's 71 stitches for each column plus 4 stitches for the turn chain. Um, and then I just put, I like to mark what the last stitch in the actual row is, so I put a stitch marker at 71 and one in the very last stitch just to make sure it doesn't unravel while I'm working with the other color. I also put a stitch marker right in the beginning stitch because I'm going to start this a little bit differently with the second color. Because this is a maze, I need it to have a starting place. So with my first color, instead of just making a chain, I'm going to wrap this around my other colors chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around my chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, then I'm going to yarn over one more time and do the same thing, go around the chain and bring up a loop. So this is going to give me some wraps around and, and I'll squish these together so that they start. Now I'm going to make my chain and this one is going to be a little bit shorter because there's fewer stitches in this color. So it's going to be 69 for the chain and 4 for the turn. And that ended up a little wobbly, so I'm going to redo it. Something about talking while crafting. Huh? So one, to make it so I don't have to recount a whole bunch, I usually put a stitch marker every 20 stitches. I don't even remember where I bought these, probably Joann's or Michael's, but you can just use a bobby pin or a safety pin if you have one, if you don't have um, stitch markers. I put my marker right here, that counts as number one, so that's where the turn chain comes out of, so I need to put my first stitch two rows later. And I'm actually not even going to work around the, the pink chain yet, and I'll show you in a little bit. Um, because this one is in front, um, I wouldn't have anything to work around. But these next ones, I'm going to have three stitches from the back, so I need to have this chain in front of where I work. So as I do this, I'm going to skip one stitch and put it in the next. I'm going to go from the back. So I need to make sure that peach chain is in front of where I'm working. And the first row is always the worst. I mean, I hate working into chains. So, so there's one from the back and then my chain. Skip a stitch, and then in the next. There's two from the back, and a chain. So always a chain in between each stitch. I'm assuming that you, if you're watching this video, are familiar with the basics of interlocking crochet. If you're not, I have a video that teaches you how to do it. However, this video, um, I start in a very different way because of just the nature of the video. Okay, and now I've done, so I've done a front and three backs, and actually, 
I will often mark off what I've done on here as I go with a pen or a highlighter so I don't lose track. You don't have to do that, of course. You can do whatever you want. So now these, there's two from the front, so I need this peach behind. I'm gonna skip one stitch and work in the next. And then another one in the front, skip a stitch and work in the next. So there's my two in the front. Come on, camera focus. Now I've got a whole bunch in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, I'm gonna start with ten and then I'll figure out how many more. So again, I need my peach to come in the front because my stitch is in the back. So I'm gonna skip a stitch and go in here. I'm using a size I crochet hook. Um, you could do it with a size H. It would be a little bit smaller in the end, the project would be. And the hook I'm using is a Furls Crochet Streamline. I really wish that I had an Odyssey in this size though because this yarn is a little grippy and the streamlines have a little bit more grip to them than the um, Odysseys. And I would just love to have that smooth, smooth feel. But you work with what you got, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I can leave this chain just hanging out in the front because all of these are supposed to be behind, right? So on my chart, I'm going to cross off my two fronts and then ten of these backs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine more backs. On my website and in the pattern, I'll also have written instructions if you want just to know the stitch counts without looking at the chart. Okay, then I've got, looking at my chart, one front stitch. So I need my peach to go behind. So I need to work in the front. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six back stitches. So this goes in the front again. Skip a stitch and work in the next. Oh, I forgot my chain. I've got one front again, so I need this peach behind. And then one back. 
back again. And then right here at the end, we're gonna skip over this stitch where this wraps around and we'll do one last stitch in our first starting chain. And then I will do a chain four for my turn chain and put a stitch marker in there so it doesn't unravel. Okay, so that kind of looks like a crazy mess, but if you stretch it out, I'm just straightening out this part. So if you straighten this out, you can see that it actually matches up with our chart. So we've got this one in the front here, this one in the front here, and you go along, then they have ooh, way down here, two in the front, and then one in the front, and then our edge. Oh dear, you know what I forgot to do is make sure that this started out in the front. So that's annoying. I should have had this in the front. But you know what, I'm just going to go like this and we'll have to pull my yarn through it. Don't recommend it. This should have started out in the front and I started in the back, so now I'm going to have to drag my yarn through here as I work, which is super annoying. But you live and you learn, as I don't really want to redo that whole blue row. Okay, so now this will be 1B, which will be our conch color row. So again, with interlocking crochet, you do each color before you turn. So now I'm going to make sure that my chain for this peach is straight before I start because it's already attached on the other end. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, of course, but I just try to make it straight. Okay. I'm not super worried if I get a little bit of a twist in there, but it will look better if I don't. This needing to pull through there thing is going to be really annoying to me, so I probably will end up cutting my yarn and reconnecting it. Okay, so just like with the black color, we're going to look here and we can read the color or the or the name. So if it's a white square in that row, it's going to be a front stitch because this will need to be in front to make it lighter, and if it's dark, it's going to be back. So front, and then four backs for this color. Well, and the front is actually our turn chain. So this is the front, so then the first actual stitch I'm going to do is this back. So one, two, three, four backs. And I need to find what stitch I'm doing that into. So one, two, three, four, five, six, that was my ending chain. So this is where I'm going to work my first back stitch. I'm actually going to put a stitch marker in there just so I don't lose it. So I'm coming from the back and I'm going to come in between these two. So this is my wall and this is my first blue post. So I need to come in between this one and grab that stitch that I marked. There's my first back stitch, and then I've got four of these, so making sure I go around the next blue post. Now it's a good idea to check yourself every now and then just to make sure you've got one peach colored stitch between each blue post so that you don't have to end up undoing a whole bunch to go back and fix it if you mess up. So I like to check every few stitches. Okay, so that was a front and four backs. And I've got two fronts.
and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight backs. So I cut my wonky yarn that I messed up on and make it easier. When I'm coming from the back, sometimes I will use the, the pointy part of my hook to kind of pull that yarn through. It just makes it a little bit easier for me. Um, So that's one, two, three, four. I need eight backs, so I need to do four more. All right, we're getting there. We've got my eight backs, so I'm going to cross those off. And we've got a front and then one, two, three, four, five, six backs. Things go so much smoother once this first row is done, in my opinion. Because you don't have to work through these chains. Let's just stop for a second and make sure we've got one stitch between each chain. I think we're still good. I'm still doing good here. Me personally, I'm most likely to skip one of the other colors posts when I switch from front to back. So just watch yourself and make sure you don't skip one when you go from front to back. Alright, so now I need six backs. I've done two. So now I did six backs and then a front. So now I need two backs, two fronts. So, checking my chart again, I did two backs, two fronts, and I need one, two, three, four, five backs.
Coming up on the end, five backs and a two fronts and a back. And this last stitch is going to work from the back into this big poof that we made. And then a chain of four for our turn chain. Put a stitch marker in so that I don't lose my spot. Whew, all right, we are through the foundation rows. So this is where I cut off my thread because I had made it wind through there, but it is off now. So you can see that this matches up with what this looks like here. Okay, and this is wrapped around here because this is the start of our maze. So you can see that the maze here starts with a little zigzag. So here's the start of our little zig. So now to do the second row, and on your actual chart I will have written on the side um, whether color B starts in the front or the back, so I should have had a little front here. Um, I haven't done it, this is kind of my draft, so I haven't written it on there yet, but it will be on there for yours. Okay, so here we're going to again work from the right side, and we're on row two. So that we're going to start with row 2A right here, and we're going to start with um, B color in the back. And if I hadn't written it on there, you can tell because here it needs to be in the back. So whatever it is on the B side, that's what it needs to be. So I'm going to turn this around so that we're working back this way. Okay, so this is row 2 of the first maze. And here I just hand wrote it, but on yours I will um, have it printed that I need color B to start in the back. So I'm going to make sure my B, B color is behind my work. And I'm going to put A color back on my hook. And normally if I was, when I'm doing videos, I try and use light colored yarn, but in this one I need them to be high contrast because it's a maze. So I can't really do, well I guess I could do two light colors, but it just wouldn't look quite right. Okay, so I'm going to look here, and I've got three Bs, so I need to go in the back three times. And again, since we've, we're done with our foundation row, our first row, and so now I'm always going to work in the top of the double crochet on the row before, so that makes it a lot easier to see where I need to be. So it's one back, two back. Three from the back. And you don't need to watch all of these videos. I am going to make the entire thing on video in case you want to see it. But um, if you are comfortable using the chart, obviously you can just use that. So now I've got four from the front. And again, every stitch is a double crochet and then a chain one. And I always make sure I skip a post in between each stitch to keep the pattern. Okay, so there's my four fronts, and I've got three backs. And again, so I've got to make sure I, I skip that post. Sometimes it looks a little wonky and you don't really want to skip, but you've got to skip, skip the other color post every time. So 
So there's three backs, now a front and then a back. I'm only getting one loop. mark off what I've done so far. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six fronts. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six fronts. Now I've got two backs, and then one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fronts. So two backs, seven fronts. And this is actually the first time I've made this pattern. I realized that it was going to take me so long to video it that if I made one before and then started videoing, I might never finish the project. So, you guys get to see me discover it for the first time. I mean, I'm well acquainted with the charts. I've been working on those for a few weeks. It takes a lot of time to get them all formatted and get the back pattern especially figured out. It's just time consuming. But I just think it's so much easier to have the back chart so you don't have to do any mental figuring about what the back needs to look like when you're doing the back rows. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So I needed seven, I've got five, I need two more. One advantage of being able to print them is if you want to make more than one set, you can still cross them off and just print another one. Okay, so I've got two backs and then four fronts and a back. And then I'm done with this print. And you always end, <coughs> excuse me, you always end with a double crochet in the turn chain, which will be one, two stitches from your last double crochet. And then do a turn chain. Got a stitch marker. Okay, so that is row 2A. And you can always double check and make sure it's looking like what your pattern says it should look like. I've got these little zoops, and then the lines, and then a zoop, and this little H. So it's looking, it's looking like it's supposed to. We've got this little zig. Okay. Now for row 2B. So this first one was the back, and that is already done just because we started with it in the back. So we don't actually need to work that stitch. So the first ones we're going to work is this back and then this front.
I put this blanket that I use as a backdrop through the wash and it's gotten all strange and fuzzy. That's what I get for washing things. So it's a back and then a front. And then a back, then a front. So now I've done back, front, back, front. Another back front. And then I've got one, two, three, four backs. This is also the first time that I've drawn the back chart before I've actually made the project. It took me a while, but I figured out kind of the algorithm for how to do the back. And so I'm going to share that with you in another video and blog post eventually. just haven't found the time to write it up yet. Okay, so that's my four backs. Now I've got a front back, front back. Oof, got away. So I'm going to cross this off. So front back, front back. So we'll have a moment of truth when I turn it over for the next row and see if I did it right. Okay, I've got front, back, front, front. Now back, back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fronts, two backs, and then seven fronts. And so hopefully you guys are seeing how you can read the chart as you go across. I try to make it as easy for you as possible. And just check every now and then to make sure you're not skipping any posts, especially because this one is a maze. So sometimes if I skip one, I'll just be like, yeah, it's okay. It'll look a little wonky there. But on this one, if you mess up, then your maze might not work or you know, it could just cause problems. So the whole idea between, behind these mazes was that uh, <laughs> kids sometimes get really impatient while they're waiting for dinner. And hopefully this will give them something to do while they wait, if they're not like helping you set the table or put things out. I just thought it'd be kind of a fun idea. And my seven-year-old helped me design some of these mazes, and so I told him that if we sell copies of the pattern, that he will get a dollar for every pattern we sell. So, you will be supporting 
seven-year-old maze maker if you purchase a PDF copy of this pattern. Okay, two backs, three fronts, two backs. I always get a little nervous at the end of every row, like what if I messed up and I, I don't have enough stitches and I just counted totally wrong. You guys freak out like that ever? Is that just me? Probably just me. I've got these strands from when I changed yarn. Get out of my way, yarn. Finishing it off with two backs. Again, just like with the blue, my last stitch is going to be in the turn chain. So I've got to find my turn chain. One, two stitches past my last double crochet. And then I'll do a chain four and place a stitch marker. Okay, so this is the end of row two. You can see our little design coming along pretty nicely. I'm gonna mark off the rest of the row that I did. So it just makes it easier for me to make sure I'm in the right spot. And I'll turn back over to the front chart and turn my project back over. And now we can check and make sure that my pattern is looking right. I think so far so good. Alright, so this is row three. So for row three, I need to start with my B color in the back again. So B color in the back. I'm going to get my A color back on my hook. And now we're going to start with front, front, back, back. three fronts. So front, I'm just working from the front of the work. And I'm never actually attaching blue to pe peach or peach to blue. They are independent of each other. Two, three, four, five, six back. Cross that off our list. I've got two front, two back, two front, two back.
This is also the first time I've worked with this dishy yarn from Louis Crochet. And I like the feel of it. It's a little smoother than like Lily Sugar and Cream yarn or Bernat Handicrafter Cotton. So that's kind of nice. It is kind of fuzzing a little bit more than the other ones do, which I guess maybe is because it's softer. So you could use either type of yarn that you'd like. Alright, so there's my two front, two back, two front, two back, so I'll mark that off on my chart. So now I've got front, back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fronts. So front and the back, and then eight fronts. So that was eight in the front, now I need two in the back, and then one in the front. And then of course I need a double crochet in my top of my turn chain. Just one and two stitches from the top of my double crochet. And then a chain four for the turn. So that was row 3A. So we're not going to turn it around yet because we still need to work our B side, our B row. So here we have B starting in the back, which is good. That's what we want. And then we're going to have front, front, back. Front, 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 front. So. Two fronts, a back, and four fronts. I really love this color combo of the peach and the navy. I just think it's really nice. But of course, you can use whatever color you want. I thought about doing black and white, you know, kind of traditional maize, or like gray and white, like this. But eventually I decided to go with something a little bit more colorful. And I think it looks really nice. We crochet um, this yarn. One of the reasons I picked it was because they just have a ton of colors. So you can do a lot of different things. And it's not um, super expensive. So you can afford it. I've got a link in the description if you want to check out this yarn. Or like I said, any cotton yarn. Or you could use wool. Um, or really whatever you want. I usually just steer away from acrylics in general and especially for things that are going to come by possibly hot things um, just because mainly the materials do better by heat than acrylics do but that is totally up to you for a placemat I'm sure it would be fine. So that's my four fronts. I've got one, two, three, four, five backs. I've got two fronts, two backs. One, two, three fronts, a back, two fronts. So, one, two, three, 
three hearts. Then I'm back. And then two more fronts. I've got a back, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fronts. Now I've got three backs and one front to finish off the row. And this is why I like to cross it off so I don't accidentally read this row below. I didn't finish crossing off my A row, so it's kind of trickier. But I'm on here. Three backs and a front. And then, as always, your last stitch goes into that turn chain, which is two chains from the top of your last double crochet. And then chain four, and put a stitch marker. Alright, this is looking awesome so far, you guys. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but we can double check here. So we've got this maze that goes zig zoop. It's coming up, it goes down, and I've got these paths coming up off of here. So it's looking right so far. That's encouraging. Yep, all this looking good. Okay, so I'm gonna put, so this was the end of row 3B.